It is Friday, January 19th, and the Splash Zone is back in your life. I am Matt Modi with my four favorite NBA player props for today. Unfortunately, we found ourselves in a little bit of a cold streak. We have been down the past two days in a row. That continued yesterday, obviously, going uh, one of two. I hit one of my three picks on uh, yesterday's video. A little bit of bad luck. We did get the under for Carl Anthony Towns to cash. We also had the under for Laurie Markkinen. We took him under 24 and a half points. He only scored nine in the first half. Ended the game with 26 points. The last bucket at the end killed us. If he didn't score, we would have cashed that. And then we also had SGA over six and a half assists. He had three in the first quarter. I was feeling good. Four at halftime. I was feeling good. He ended the day with six assists. So just one more and we would have cashed. So we were two plays away from having a 3-0 day. But we didn't. We did not. We have to track it as it was. So we went one of three down one unit with our plays yesterday. That brings our total profit season to date. We are up 37.23 units with an ROI of 23.18%. Now, prior to this two game stretch, we we're on the most absurd hot streak that I'll probably ever be on in my entire life. I went three straight days sweeping the slate from Saturday, Sunday, and Monday and still had a profitable day on Tuesday. Now, again, that's come to an end, but hopefully we can start another hot streak now on this Friday, which is when our hot streak started last week. As I mentioned, I have four picks for you guys. If you're not already, I would appreciate it if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel. So when we go on that next heater, we were up like 12 units from Friday to Monday, um, so or Friday to Tuesday. So it was really incredible. So I would appreciate it if you could subscribe so, we can, so you can get on the next heater we go on. And that's all we got. So let's get into today's picks. That's all the uh, rambling at the beginning. The first play that we are locking in is in the Suns versus Pelicans game. And I'm taking Devin Booker under 25 and a half points, minus 113 odds at FanDuel. It's always scary taking an under for basically any of the three Suns guys, especially Booker and Durant, because they're such talented scorers. But the under for Booker is the way to go in this one. For starters, he's not scoring as much as you would expect recently with both Kevin Durant and Bradley Beal in the lineup. Yeah, he's still scoring, but he's not scoring like the pace he was or the assisting even that. Now, obviously, we're just going with points, but still at like he was at the beginning of the year. Now that both of them are finally in the lineup playing normal minutes, he's not scoring again as much. Now, we did go over in the first three games. These two, these guys, these three guys have played together. They've only played nine. Since then, he's gone under in four of six, averaging about 24 points in that span. The scary part with the Suns is you just never know whose night it's going to be between him, Kevin Durant, and Bradley Beal. Now, it's mostly between him and Durant, but still, tonight I'm betting against Booker. This is a very, very tough matchup against the Pelicans. They just do not give up a lot of points to guards like Booker. Props.cash lists them as the fourth toughest matchup in the NBA for shooting guards. In the last 30 days, they have given up the second fewest game to shooting guards as well. And Booker, you know, technically he's listed as a shooting guard. It's a little bit of a nebulous position because he's technically their lead ball handler as well but he's more of he's not a typical prototypical point guard what i think is cool is courtside pal doesn't just look at positions but they look at scoring and shooting a profile and the pelicans give up the second fewest points to someone of devin booker's scoring a profile to me that's the most important thing because it doesn't necessarily depend on your position it depends on how you score right Steph curry is a lot different of a scoring point guard than someone like colin sexton so that stuff is important and four of the last five and six of the last eight shooting guards against the Pelicans have gone under their point total over under. So I like the under as our play here. Hopefully we can fade Booker and that comes through for us. Next up in the Spurs versus Hornets game, LaMelo Ball over 25 and a half points, minus one at 20 odds at ESPN bet. Generally, I like to pump these numbers up to get better odds than minus 120, but if you look at the minus 120 compared to the rest of the sports books, it's actually a pretty good price so I'm just going to go ahead and stick with this one. At the end of the day, getting the best odds compared to the market is the most important thing. Now, LaMelo has only been back for three games since he returned from injury. He's been cooking in those three games. He scored 28. That, that 28 points was against the Spurs. 21 and then 29 in the three games since he came back from injury. And that 29 points was pretty impressive because it was, because it was against the Pelicans, who I just mentioned being a pretty tough matchup for guards. In the three games I mentioned... Lamelo has attempted 9, 13, and 12 three-point shots. He's just firing away 
from deep. Granted, his three point percent hasn't been all that great, which just means that if that comes around, that just means that's a lot more room for improvement and room for Mamela Ball to hit these 26 points for us. I do like his three point prop as a play, but I'm just going to stick with his points officially because he's been scoring at the line as well. I love how aggressive Lamella Ball has, has been in the, in the game against the Spurs three games ago, 16 free throw attempts. Last game against the Pelicans, 10 free throw attempts. With those types of three point numbers and those types of free throw attempts, it's just really easy to get you to the points that we need him to get to. And this matchup against the Spurs is such a juicy matchup for guards, point guards like Lamella Ball. And now they, they won't even have Wemby. That hurts them inside, it hurts them in the pick and roll, hits them in a lot of situations. So I think that only helps Lamella Ball. The Spurs are listed as the third easiest matchup in the NBA when it comes to point guard point props. And over the past month, they have given up the fifth most points per game to opposing point guards. Again, I like to look at their, their scoring profile. How do they score? Courtside Powell lists the Spurs as giving up the second most points per game to someone of Lamella Ball's shooting uh, scoring profile. Now, this could also basically, everything I've said could also apply to Terry Rozier. He has also been playing well in the past two games with Lamello, but the better value from an odds perspective was on Lamello Ball. So that's what we went with. But if you want two honorable mentions, I like his three-point prop. I would pump that up to five plus made three-pointers because you can get pretty juicy odds. And then Terry Rozier over, I think, 24 and a half points is a good play as well. Next up, Pacers versus Blazers game. We're taking Jeremy Grant over 20 and a half points plus 110 odds at ESPN bet. Now this matchup against the Pacers, it's just as juicy as it gets from uh, when it comes to Jeremy Grant's position, how he scores. And that's exactly where the Pacers defense is weak. Now with that said, there is a risk here in that Pascal Siakam is making his debut for the Pacers. So we don't know how much of an impact he's going to have on their defense. Are they still going to be a train wreck against power forwards like Jeremy Grant? Maybe, maybe not. Regardless, I personally am not scared off in this, his literal first game with the Pacers. I don't think he's going to make such a drastic impact in his first game. So I do like still going with Jeremy Grant, but I did want to at least present you guys with that information so you can make your own decision. Obviously, I am still taking it and I'm still officially tracking it, but just wanted to be honest with you. It's just such a good matchup. And again, I have a hard time believing one player in his first game is going to dramatically change anything. The Pacers are listed as the best matchup in the NBA for power forward point props specifically. On the year, they've given up the most points per game to power forwards in the NBA by a mile, like a two point per game difference between them and the second highest team. And over the past month, they're allowing the third most points per game to power forwards. So sure, they've gotten better, but also not really. Again, I doubt Sox Siakam can dramatically change this to being a good matchup. A good matchup meaning a good defense, I should say. Last game, Jimmy Grant went off 430, so we're not quite fading recent results here, but he went under in the previous two, and those were both really tough matchups. And the Blazers are getting DeAndre Ayton back in this one. That actually should help. Jeremy Grant just clears things up inside a little bit. Grant went over this number in 14 of 23 games that he played with DeAndre Ayton, who's listed as probable, so he's not confirmed back, but, but he's most likely back. So I like Jeremy Grant in this one. I think it's a great play for plus 110 odds. And then our fourth and final pick in the Nuggets versus Celtics game, Jamal Murray over two and a half made three pointers plus 130 odds at DraftKings. So for our last play of the evening, I love saving our uh, official true to the nature splash zone plays for our last pick. Although I'll admit our recent splash zone plays haven't been that successful. They were great at the beginning of the year. We're on a little bit of a cold streak specifically with our splash zone plays. Let's change that today. As good as the Celtics defense is, and they're good basically everywhere. And I've been saying this, this part all year. They give up a ton of points to point guards, and they give up a ton of three-pointers to point guards as well. Props.cash lists them as the fourth easiest matchup, both for point guard point props and for point guard three-point props as well. For this one, I'm officially riding with Jamal Murray's three-point prop, but at, similar to the uh, Lamella Ball one, I like his points as well. Guards have been making a lot of three-pointers against the Celtics recently. Anthony Edwards, technically a shooting guard, but he went, he had, he had hit three on the over-under of two and a half. Benedict Matherin hit five on the over-under of one and a half. Josh Giddy hit four on the over-under of 0 0.5. Granted, he's left wide open, so the Giddy one is a little bit different, but Edwards and Matherin, they play similarly to Jamal Murray. Now, Murray has been cold recently, so I do like this one as a fade of recent results. He's missed it in two straight games, and he's missed it in three of four as well. 
on the year, he has gone over two and a half made three pointers in 13 of 26 games, which means that prior to this two game cold streak, he was hitting at exactly a 50% rate. I think that cold streak comes to an end today, cashing our fourth and final pick of the evening. And that's all we got four plays for you guys to lock in. Let's get this cold streak out of the way and start another hot streak. If you are riding with me, make sure to comment and let me know. Other than that, I would appreciate it. If you could like the video, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff helps me out a ton. Appreciate everybody for watching and have a good one.